Okay. So in the last class, we had completed this Wolf Kishner reduction and also Clemenson reduction. Does anyone have any uh, any doubt in this? The Wolf Kishner reduction and Clemenson reduction. No, sir, no doubt. Carbonyl compound directly converted or reduced to hydrocarbon. It's a very important reaction for your board. Now we are going to start a new chemical properties or chemical reaction. The previous one was reduction. Now we are going to talk about oxidation. And as you are already familiar with reduction, what is reduction? Addition of hydrogen or removal of oxygen is called a reduction. And here we are going to talk about oxidation. That means addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen. It can be any one of it. So basically, if you are going to, as you have already studied in alcohols, phenols, ethers, that alcohols, primary alcohols oxidizes to aldehyde, secondary alcohols oxidizes to ketones, but tertiary alcohols cannot oxidize. It will break it. It will be broken and then oxidize. So for oxidation, if you have an aldehyde, RCH, and if you are going to use oxidizing agent or you are going to do oxidation of this, this aldehyde will be directly converted into carboxylic acid. Always do remember it's very important that carboxylic, uh, this aldehyde will be converted into carboxylic acid. Let's take an example. If you have this propanol and you are going to use an oxidizing acid, it will be directly converted into carboxylic acid. So it will be directly converted into carboxylic acid. But when we are having a ketone, then there will be cleavage of bond and then it will be oxidized into carboxylic acid. So first you are going to write it, then I'm going to take an example of ketone and I will show you how it will be broken and how, how the bond will be cleaved. Please do let me know when you are done with this. Done, so. Very good. But if you are going to have ketone, that's a very important reaction. For ketone, let's take an example, RCH2. And here is your ketone agent, C double bond O, and then CH2, and this is R dash. R dash represent another alkyl group, then this R. R is also an alkyl group, and R dash is also an alkyl group, but both are different alkyl group. And if you are going to oxidize this, there is, you need to take care of this. Just the carbon, nearest carbon to this carbon that means i'm going to take one two three i'm not going i'm not numbering it i'm just showing you that the nearest or directly attached carbon to this ketonic carbon are you getting my point am I not? yes sir. Uh, yes okay now see what will happen so the bond will break so by cleavage by, by cleavage i'm going to write by cleavage of c1 and c2 by cleavage of c1 and c2 first this bond if this bond will be broken then the this part will be converted into carboxylic acid rc double oh and the rest part is basically your r dash CH2 and then C double OH. You can see, you just need to write the carboxylic acid. 
so this will be r and with this p there will be double oh that will represent it is carboxylic acid and since it is broken so on the right hand side this is r dash this is ch2 and there will be p o o h again if you are going to cleave or there will uh, there will be cleavage of c2 and c3 c2 and c3 then see what will happen it's very easy to understand this bond will be broken and you can see this i am going to write first r c r dash c double o h this hydrogen will be removed that means basically the oxidation and also that part r c h 2 c double o h so if i am going to give you a question on this basis c h 3 c h 2 C double bond O CH3. And if you are going to oxidize it, please name all the products form. Please name all the products form. Is that yes, sir? We just started from here okay. oxidation. So just take a, a screenshot. Aldehyde and ketones are directly oxidized into carboxylic acid, but aldehyde can easily be oxidized into carboxylic acid, whereas ketone cannot be easily oxidized to carboxylic acid. There will be drastic condition because uh, to oxidize this ketone we have to break the bond so the condition is for ketone is high as compared to carboxylic acid so you can see the carbon which is directly connected to this carbon there will be there will be cleavage of bond between this carbon and this carbon and this carbon and this carbon and you just need to make carboxylic acid so you can see the cleavage between C1 and C2. So with this R C double OH and with this R dash CH2 C double OH. And again, if you are going to break this bond, R dash C double OH and R CH2 C double OH. There will be four product. So in that way, I'm going to give you a question. I just gave a question of this. Please oxidize this ketone. It's very easy. So can you do a little bit up? A little bit up? Yes. Uh, yeah, fine, fine. To oxidize ketone, we need elevated temperatures, high temperatures, and a strong oxidizing agent. But to oxidize aldehyde, mild oxidizing agent can also oxidize aldehyde into carboxylic acid. But when you are going to talk about this ketone, it is not at the same condition. Everyone getting my point? Please do let me know when to change the slide. Can I change the slide? Is that yes, sir? 
So please do this. Anyone got an, any answer? Anushka, Ahmad, Alan? Uh, no, sir. Thanks. Okay, just so see, I'm going to explain. What you need to do? Which carbon is directly connected to this carbon? You can see this carbon. I'm just going to number it. Only three, uh, two carbon directly connected to this ketonic carbon. This carbon and this carbon. And what, in the first step, what you need to do? just break this bond and if you are going to break this bond you just need to write a carboxylic acid with two carbon and with two carbon on the left hand side you can see two carbon is there so you just need to make a carbo prepare a carboxylic acid with two carbon and in the right hand side you can also see two carbon is there so you need to make or prepare carboxylic acid with two, two carbon. What you need to do is very simple. You just need to make or prepare carboxylic acid with two carbon. Because on both sides there are two carbon. And if you are going to break this bond, so you can see, you are going to prepare a carboxylic acid that is having only one carbon. So it will be methanoic acid. HCOOH and on the left hand side you can see there are three carbon so you are going to prepare a carboxylic acid of car uh, um, a carboxylic acid which contains three carbon so it is it will be propanoic acid this is methanoic acid this is ethanoic acid and ethanoic acid is that clear everyone yes okay, yes, sir. Okay, if it's really clear, do let me know the please do let me know as soon as possible. I'm waiting. Sir, what is the name of the product? Uh, sir, I meant with the previous solution. Oh, oh, please do the this. Yes, sir.
Everyone done with this? Oh, no, sir. Uh, I had a little doubt. Okay, no problem. See, this is your functional group. So, with this carbon, two carbons are directly attached, this one and this one. I'm going to show it like this. Now you can see that if you are going to break this bond, so on the left hand side, how many carbon present? Anushka? Sir, three. Three carbon. Can you name the compound? 
having three carbons which have carboxylic acid as functional group three carbon that means prop so butenoic no no three carbon prop propenoic acid propenoic acid it's propenoic acid so what is the structure of propenoic acid ch3 ch2 c double oh and on the left hand side how many carbon present three carbon again with the three carbon it will have the same product ch3 c double oh now if you are going to break the bond between two and three so on the right hand side two carbon is there two carbon is there and with two carbon it is ethanoic acid and ethanoic acid has formula this and on the left hand side you can see one two three four carbon so with the four carbon it is butanoic acid z yes sir so please do write it i'm going to write some points about this please do write it so basically aldehydes are easily oxidized aldehydes are easily oxidized to carboxylic acids on treatment with common oxidizing agent oa that means common oxidizing agent such as <coughs> nitric acid potassium permanganate which is a strong oxidizing agent potassium permanganate and next is potassium dichromate etc these are all oxidizing agent and also mild oxidizing agent we can use mild oxidizing with oxidizing agent with aldehydes to ox oxidize into carboxylic acid mild oxidizing agent such as tolens reagent tolens reagent and also there is another reagent that is phalanx reagent and also oxidize aldehydes <laughs> so please do write it so basically to oxidize aldehyde it's very easy as compared to ketone because to oxidize ketones we need elevated temperature as well as a strong oxidizing agent that's why it's not easy in ketone basically we need to break the bond that's why we need a drastic more uh what we call it more drastic condition as compared to aldehyde please do let me know when you are done with this so what is this uh, phalanx reagent also also oxidize aldehyde phalanx reagent and phalanx reagent which is a mild oxidizing agent and you know what we will <clears throat> do taste for ketone as well as aldehyde with this phalanx and phalanx reagent because these are mild oxidizing agent and if you have a ketone or aldehyde and if you don't know which is this what is this either aldehyde and ketone so we are going to react this with either tolens reagent or phalanx reagent if it will oxidizes that means it is aldehyde if it doesn't oxidize that means it is ketone
you do let me know when you are done with this so till when we will finish the portion full portion portion of what this uh, whole chapter no sir full chapter <laughs> portion see i am trying to finish this till in december but it's not possible so i was all uh, i also want to talk about this slavery so i want to take some extra classes on friday i think you all are free on friday right yes sir so the basically target is till 15th december but uh, since it's 28th november today so on this coming friday can we have an extra class uh no issue sir but if you just notify us with the time i think it will be then yeah, you will you will be getting the time before friday what about you zaid anushka yes, sir Adam? so for how many hours will the class be because i Same. think i might have uh, like classes from schools as well i think it will be for one and a half an hour like this class okay sir. so let's focus on this <clears throat> can i change the slide so just a minute almost done just please do like you know when you are done Thanks. <laughs> Everyone done with this? Now I am for Tito, and I am going to write a poem. Please do write it with me, as I have already explained it. Tito, sir. generally oxidized under drastic conditions drastic conditions because we need to break the bond that is the strong oxidizing as in first for oa that is stand for a, a strong oxide a strong oxidizing or, or a strong oxidizing agent and elevated temperatures that means high temperature elevated temperatures and also their oxidation ox dn that is stand for oxidation involves carbon carbon bond cleavages carbon carbon bond cleavages <clears throat> and always remember that whenever you are getting an a uh, carboxylic acid from ketone the parent chain will have lesser number of carbon as you know that because there are uh, there is broken or uh, the bond is cleaved that's why in case of aldehydes if you have a carbon of if you have a compound of five carbons you will get a carboxylic acid of five carbon but in case of this uh, aldehydes uh, sorry ketones you will get lesser number of carboxylic acid as compared to the number of carbon in ketones so please do write it are you done with this yes sir 
Ahmad, Zaid. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now see, the next topic comes out to be this tolerance relation. You know, this is also known as tolerance test. And we use this for identifying whether it is ketone or <clears throat> LDL. As you know that this tolerance reagent is basically mild oxidizing agent. So it can only oxidize aldehyde, not this uh, ketone. So <clears throat> if you have an aldehyde, RCHO and tolerance in tolerance reagent, we use ammonical silver nitrate and this ammonical silver nitrate is known as tolerance reagent. So I'm going to put this two moles of AGN, uh, AGNH3 whole twice and this is your ammonical silver nitrate. In the presence of base, if you are going to carry this reaction, you will see that this aldehyde will be oxidized into carboxylic anion and this as you can see here the silver has plus one oxidation state but it will be in silver mirror formed it will be in silver mirror along with evolution of h2o as well not evolution of h2o formation of h2o and and ns3 so you can easily identify that you can see this CHO. This is aldehyde converted into carboxylic ion. That means oxidation take, took place. Here the oxidation took place. And you can also see that this has Ag plus and it goes into zero. That means it reduces its uh, Since <coughs> tolerance reagent is a mild oxidizing agent, so it will reduce itself and the substance which is in front of it the oxidizes. So I can write some point about this. Ammonical silver nitrate. Solid. Which is your tolerance reagent. Tolerance on warming with aldehyde. Aldehyde gives the following reaction. And if you are going to use ketone instead of aldehyde, the reaction will not occur. Please do write it. The reaction occurs in basic medium. This is basic medium. Please do let me know when you are done with this. So done. Very good. <clears throat> Am I Is that almost fine. That's true. No, is that yes sir. now there is another reagent that i already told you phalanx reagent and it has the same work as this tolerance test so first of all what is this phalanx test so it's very easy we have basically two 
container in which you can say uh, we we have paling a container paling a and we have filing b two container we have in which in the first filing a we have copper sulfate solution we have aqueous copper sulfate solution and you know that copper sulfate solution in aqueous will form cuso4.5h2 that is known as blue vitriol you have studied it blue vitriol and in the second container it is basically this uh, rosel salt basically what is this rosel salt and i am going to write its name sodium potassium tartrate sodium potassium tartrate also known as rosel salt rosel salt and we will mix it and react with aldehyde so <laughs> aldehyde will be oxidizes and this you can see wait a minute So, can anyone tell me what is the oxidation state of copper in the copper sulfate solution? You have studied this in electrochemistry. M R Anushka Z. What is the oxidation state of copper in CuSO4? Okay. So, I'm going to write the reaction. You can see this is an aldehyde, and you can see. SO4 has negative charge that means copper will have positive charge so the oxidation state of copper will be Cu+2 so i am going to react this with Cu+2 again the reaction will be carried out in basic medium and you can see this aldehyde will be directly oxidized into carboxylate ion anion and the copper will be reduced here Cu2O cupric oxide and 3H2 will be formed. Now you can see that this will have plus one oxidation state, and this is red brown PPP. This is also now if you are going to react this, uh, going to do this this test with uh, ketone, the reaction will not occur because it is a mild oxidizing nature. So please do write it and let me know when you are done. in today's class we are going to complete up to this <coughs> what we call Please do let me know when you are done with this. <clears throat> Up to this aldol, and aldol is very important and very easy. If you will go by the rule, it's very easy. Are you done with this? Yes, sir. Done. Then so again, this is the alcohol, uh, alcohol uh, aldehyde and ketone test. Now see, <clears throat> we have another test, and this is also for with the oxidation. So I'm going to write a topic: oxidation of methyl ketone. Methyl ketone by haloform by vitamin by haloform reacts. So I'm going to write some points about this. Please do write with me. Aldehydes and ketones having at least one methyl group 
linked to the or linked directly to the carbonyl carbon carbonyl carbon atom also known as since methyl is there and connected to if it is connected to ketone so also known as methyl ketone are oxidized by sodium hypohalite oxidized by sodium hypohalite <laughs> to corresponding or sodium salts of corresponding carboxylic acid having one carbon less than one carbon less than that of carbonyl compound it's very easy to understand please do write first you are going to write it then you will see methyl ketone we just need to find methyl ketone please do let me know when you are done with this then i will write the reaction After this reaction, we are going to do iron dioxide, which is very easy. Yes, sir. Sir, one minute. I'm still writing. Okay. Please do write and let me know. Sir, done. Ahmad, are you done with this, Alan? Done, sir. Very. Okay. Let's take an example. It's very easy. If I'm going to show you, the example is very easy. You can see that. if you have a ketone like this what you need to find or what you need to look for and this is your sodium hypohalite this is your naox is sodium hypohalite what you need to look is this is your carbonyl group carbonyl and if there is directly attachment of a ch3 group this is what we are searching for so what you need to do whenever there is something like this at least one ch3 methyl is connected directly to the carbonyl carbon it will be oxidizes to this part this part that means it is carboxylic acid carbo uh, salt of carboxylic acid and the next part you can see this ch3 will be converted into chx3 and x is only valid for chlorine bromine and iodine i'm going to take another example of this according to ncert so there is compound like this ch and there is ch3 and there you can see can anyone tell me which functional group present in this how many functional group present in this any one of you anushka amad zaid
how many functional group present in it? Anyone have? Ahmad, <clears throat> Anushka, Zair, have you done this? I'm doing so. Okay, Zair, any answer from you? See, Trying, this is your carbonyl group. This is your carbonyl group. What you need to find is methyl ketone. And what does this methyl ketone mean? This methyl ketone means that means basically CH3 directly connected to the carbon. CS3 directly connected to the carbon. Which carbon forming double bond O? Are you getting my point? Ahmad, Anushka, Alan, Zair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this CS3 directly connected to this carbon, which is having carbonyl group. So what you need to do, the rest part is as it is. The rest part is as it is. And we need to just focus on this part. C double bond O and just remove this CS3 and add ONA. This methyl will be directly converted into uh, ONO. When we are going to attach ONA, it will form salt of carboxylic acid. Salt of carboxylic acid. As you can see, this is CS3 C double OH. This is your carboxylic acid, OH. This is your carboxylic acid. But if you are going to place CS3, C double O, Na, any metal here at the place of hydrogen, it is salts of carboxylic acid. Salts of carboxylic acid. Is that clear, Ahmad? Zayat, Anushka, Allen? Okay. And yes, the sir. final product will be as it is, CH, CL3. That means basically chloroform. Chloroform. So it's very easy, man. Please do it. I'll give you another question on this, then we'll move to the aldol. Everyone done with this? So almost. Okay. If anyone has any doubt, please ask me.
sir, can you just explain how it, did you get this chloroform, sir? Plus CHCL3. You just need to remove the CH3 and form a chloroform. With this help of chlorine and CH3Cl, we will basically take three moles of this, so it will form CHCL3. Okay. So you just need to, as a byproduct, you are always going to form chloroform or uh, haloform, you can say. If you are going to use DR here, so you are going to use CHDR3. The byproduct is fixed. Okay. So we are just using the byproduct. Yeah, byproduct is not uh, generally asked in the question. The main, we okay. always deal with the main product. Can I move to the next reaction or should I give an example on this? Zed, Anushka, Amar. No, sir, understood. Okay. Now I'm going to start another reaction. That is basically reaction due to alpha hydrogen. Reaction due to alpha. Hydrogen. Now you can see that reaction due to alpha hydrogen. So what is this alpha hydrogen? So I'm going to explain this alpha hydrogen. If you have this group. So as you can see, this is your functional group and the carbon which is directly attached to the functional group are known as alpha carbon. And with this alpha carbon, the, num uh, the hydrogen which is attached with the alpha carbon is known as alpha hydrogen. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Like if I'm going to take an example of this CH3, CH2, and then there is C double bond O and then H. So you can see that this is your functional group and this carbon is directly attached to this functional group. So it will have alpha carbon and these hydrogens will be known as alpha hydrogen. If you are going to talk about this carbon, this is the second carbon after the this. So it will be known as beta carbon. Beta carbon and the hydrogen will be known as beta hydrogen. If a carbon is directly attached to the functional group, that carbon is known as alpha carbon and the hydrogen which is attached with the alpha carbon will be known as alpha hydrogen. And the carbon which is connected to the alpha carbon is known as beta carbon. And the carbon which is connected to beta carbon is known as the gamma carbon and so on. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir, clear. <clears throat> Very good. Always remember that this alpha hydrogen is most acidic. Most acidic. I'm going to show you. First, you are going to write this. Please do write it and then let me know. <clears throat> let me know when you are done with this. Are you done with this? Done. Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Yes. Now, this alpha hydrogen is a story. As you know, this is your functional group and this is the carbon and we have hydrogen here. And now, as you know that, this is your alpha carbon. That's why this is your alpha hydrogen. Now, as you can see that this, this is more electronegative. So what it will do, it will attract carbon's electron. Now, as you can see that, this carbon will have deficiency of hydrogen. This carbon will have deficiency of hydrogen. So in order to stabilize itself, this carbon will help this carbon. And this will take hydrogen's electron and hydrogen will be released in the form of H+. As soon as this H+, is released, that means it is acidic. So wherever alpha hydrogen is present, that hydrogen is most acidic hydrogen. 
So in this way, alpha hydrogen is the most acidic hydrogen. So this is a very little concept behind this alpha hydrogen most acidic. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Could you just explain this again? Okay. I'm going to explain it again. I just have to erase it. Alpha hydrogen. Alpha hydrogen is most. See, if there is a functional group like this, Anushka, and this is connected with the C, and this is connected with another bond, and there is hydrogen and like this, like this, okay? So as you can see, oxygen is more electronegative. What it will do? It will attract carbon's electron, yes or no? Yes, sir. So this carbon will have deficiency of hydrogen. That means it is unstable now. So in order to stabilize itself, this carbon will help this carbon. What it will do? It will take hydrogen's electron and make double bond with it. Now you can see that it is a stable, yes or no? Yes, sir. What are stable? And this hydrogen is released in the form of H plus. So wherever H plus is what? H plus is acid. So wherever uh, this alpha hydrogen is present, that is most acidic. Okay. This is what I'm saying. Anushka. Yes, sir. Understood. Now I'm going to change the slide. Now comes the most important reaction in this chapter is aldo. And I'm going to give you a trick to solve this aldo, which is very easy. First, I'm going to write upon both this. Okay. So first write with aldehydes and ketones having at least one hydrogen having at least one alpha hydrogen and i think you can calculate alpha hydrogen right undergo a reaction in the presence of dilute alcohol yeah yeah in the presence of very good in the presence of dilute NaOH or alkali alkali and this is basically this alkali is act as catalyst as catalyst to form i'll give reason to every point in this to form beta hydroxy beta hydroxy aldehydes that is also known as aldo or we can call it write with me please beta hydroxy ketones if ketone is there that is known as ketol respectively this reaction is known as Aldol reaction. And we will also deal with aldol condenses. First, we will understand what does this aldol reaction. Please do let me know when you are done with this, then we are going to start this aldol, which is very important. Yes, sir. That's... Done, sir. Sir, is uh, ketone reaction also called as aldol reaction? Mm. Ketone, we call it ketone. And aldol reaction, wait a minute. For this, basically, we are going to deal with aldehyde, so ald plus ol. I will explain this in the end of the reaction. You will see if they are, that depends on the product. Aldol, ald for basically your aldehyde, all for alcohol. And kit for ketone and all for alcohol. Okay, Zab? Okay, sir. 
so you will see about it what is is uh, what it is going to be now i am going to take an example the reaction and their mechanism please be focused there and where wherever you miss you just uh, let me know now let's take an example first for an aldone reaction to occur there must be an alpha hydrogen so if i am going to take ch3cho you know that this is your functional group and this is your alpha carbon so if it has three hydrogen that means we have enough alpha hydrogen at least there must be one alpha hydrogen there is three alpha hydrogen that is good yes or no yes sir yeah so please interact with me it will help me to know whether you are getting it or not so this was the example that i was taking so can i write ch3 cho as ch2 h c double bond oh so what you need to do is first react this with dilute naoh dilute na now add you uh, as you know that as you know that this alpha hydrogen is most acidic alpha hydrogen is most acidic so what will happen this will be released in the form of h plus and its electron will go to this carbon and now carbon anion forms here alpha hydrogen is most acidic that means it will produce h plus it will give donate its electron to carbon and its now ch2 minus and there is ch is this point clear is this step clear to all of you anushka emad zaid yes sir now yes, sir. in this reaction we need to take two moles of this either aldehyde or ketone so we are going to use another this is the first mole of ethanol and we are going to use another mole of ethanol the second mole so in order to satisfy its electronic deficiency this carbon will directly attack on this carbon is that clear please do let me know oxygen is more electronegative so it will take electron from carbon now this carbon will have deficiency of electron and this carbon you can see has more electron electron rich species so it will attack this carbon is that clear please do let me know yes sir yes sir now i am going to write this first don't be confused i am going to write this first as this you can see uh, wait a minute so i am going to write this first first there is ch3 and then there is c and h so i am going to write ch and this c is directly connected to oxygen o single bond it will be because oxygen withdraw one electron from carbon and then this ch2 directly connecting with this c so there will be ch2 and then ch4 is that clear to everyone first okay. i wrote this ch3 ch o negative and since this is directly connecting or attacking on this carbon so it will be ch2 and ch is that clear to everyone yes okay. sir okay. now you are going to do hydrolysis and you know for hydrolysis you know there are two parts h plus and oh minus so this h plus will directly attack on this and you will get a product ch3 ch ch2 and then c double bond oh that means ch can i write this this h plus will attack o oh, oh negative and it will form like this is that clear yes sir now focus here this is your main functional group senior functional group so this will be your alpha carbon this will be your beta carbon so can i write beta and you can see this is junior functional group so we are going to use this as substituent so the name will be beta hydroxy beta hydroxy carbonyl compound beta hydroxy wait a minute beta hydroxy oh, oh. 
बीटा हाइड्रोक्सी कार्बोनिल कंपाउंड is that clear everyone and you can also write it as you can see there is aldehyde so we can write ald and alcohol is there so this is aldo ald ald for aldehyde and ol is for alcohol so this is aldol reaction is that clear yes sir understood amad is that Yes, Alan. Please do write it. Uh, this is not end here. I'm going to explain the aldol condensation also. So there will be aldol condensation. First, write it, and then let me know. sir yes sir what is the like the difference between uh, aldol and aldol condensation condensation that means removal of water oh, okay yes so this is aldol and if you are going to remove water molecule from here you will get <coughs> aldol condensation now you can see i am going to explain whenever you need to remove water from aldol condensation make sure i'm going to re, uh, write here again you can see whenever you are going to remove any water molecule what you need to do it's very simple this is if you want to remove h2o always remove from alpha beta hydrogen alpha beta water what i need want to say is that this is your alpha this is your beta always remove this you can also remove this oh and h from here but that is that will not be major product i will show you why you can see this is your main product aldol condenses this is known as aldol condenses and we also call it ena en that is for double bond al for aldehyde so this is also known as ena if you want to remove water from here you can see double bond will be here and you know that double bond in between carbon is more stable this is less stable and this is more stable that's why it never form this product always remove water h or oh from alpha and beta bond is that clear everyone yes sir so please do write it again i will explain because you need to do a question on this then we will move ahead <laughs> and this is aldol condensation Answer. Done, everyone. So doing, sir. Okay, please do it and let me know so that I will again explain and I will give you a question. On Wednesday, we are going to complete this cross aldol canizaro reaction electrophilic substitution. And the uses you will have to do by yourself. I will just ask the question. Carboxylic acid methods of preparation are not. Uh, are yes. Done, everyone. Yes, sir. Am I not? Okay. Yes. So again, I'm going to explain. 
you need to take two moles of and either aldehyde or ketone and whatever i am going you just need to follow the steps just remove alpha hydrogen from here h plus you will get a negative charge on the carbon where hydrogen you have from where hydrogen you have removed okay now see you got i am carbon and i am and again react this aldehyde or whatever you have with this carbon and i am making a or preparing uh, making a electrophile here like this and just add them like this and you know what happens here again after that you are going to add h2o and h plus will be added on the o negative and you will get beta hydroxy carbonyl compound or we will call it ald and o because aldehyde and alcohol is there and if you are going to remove water from here always remove water from alpha beta beta will have always oh and alpha will have one hydrogen and if you are going to remove this there will be double bond and this is known as enol and this reaction is known as aldol condensation is that clear yes sir so i am going to give you a question just follow the same step steps you will get your answer wait a moment It's not working. Wait a minute, please. Okay. So the question is, you are going to do. Aldol condensation of this. So I just wrote two moles. That means you are going to use in the first step. Then make a carbon anion and again another step. Please do it. Uh, do this for propanol. Please do let me know if you are facing any type of problem in this. and do let me know if you don't know anything
Are you done with this? See, I'm going to explain. It's very easy. So first, I'm going to take one mole of this. This is CH3 and this is CH. I'm going to put here it and this is CH. As I know, this is uh, this is our alpha carbon dioxide this. Now, in the presence of dilute L, uh, dilute NaOH, as you know that this will shift like this so it will have a negative sign ch negative and then ch and again i have to react this with this propanol so it will have ch3 ch2 and then c double bond o h now what you need to do create a electrophilic center on carbon so this will be like this this will have deficiency of carbon, so it will attack on this part. So I'm going to write this part first. So from this reaction, we will get CH3, then CH2. There is no double bond. Wait a minute, I just did it now. There is no double bond. So I'm going to write this part first, CH3, CH2, and then this will be CH, and then this will be O negative. Now you can see, this is directly attacking on this carbon so it will have bond ch and after this ch there was cho and you can also see that this ch is connected with ch3 so it will have ch3 as is everyone clear with this now what you need to do is very simple just react with h2o and h2o has two parts h plus and oh minus so this h plus will attack on this oxygen and you will get CH3, CH2 and then CH and then OH and then you can see this is your CH and this is your CH3 and this is your CH. So this part you can see is your aldol, this is your alpha, this is your beta. So it is also beta hydroxy carbonyl compound beta hydroxy carbonyl compound or you can also call as you can see this is idea this is also we can also call aldo is that clear yes sir in this so please do write it
please do let me know when you are done with this. So done. Done. Very good. Yes, sir. So, so now what you need to do? It's very simple. In order to do aldol condensation, so you know that this is your beta position and this is your alpha position. So I'm going to just so this is CH and remove this H2O. There will be double bond between these two. CH3, CH2, CH double bond, C, CH3, and there will be CH. So this is known as aldone condensation. Please do write. 